In this video, I'm going to show myself working a pass of the new Chinese XW3 satellite, also known as CAS9 or HO113, as well as talk about some of the issues the satellite seems to have, which can make working it kind of hard. That way, if you try to work it, you can more likely have success. Here is my setup. I'm showing it off partly because I've never shown it on this channel before, my linear setup. I built this little wooden thing that mounts on top of a speaker stand, like for a live PA, so that I could have the radio close to me and so that I didn't have to have it on top of a car. And it also allows me to turn the radio to work different passes and to move around during the pass. This is Kilo Golf Four Alpha Kilo Victor Box Mike One Four. Get a two for top. On December 25th, while most of the space community was excitedly discussing the James Webb Space Telescope launch of that morning, the amateur radio satellite community was also anticipating their own new satellite launching that evening. On December 26th at 3.11 UTC, XW3, CAS9, or HO113 was launched on a CZ4Z launch vehicle from the Taiwan Satellite Launch Center in China, piggybacked with the ZY1 Earth Observation Satellite. XW3 is a 6U CubeSat, approximately 10 kilograms, with a VHF-UHF linear transponder for CW and SSB. It also has the ability to take pictures as commanded by users on the ground, though the command hasn't been released to the public yet. The CW beacon, GMSK telemetry, and transponder automatically turned on within one minute of separation from the launch vehicle, and the satellite is now operational and has been used by many amateur radio satellite operators. It does, however, have some issues. I've seen a lot of reports that the CW beacon and or telemetry has a very strong signal, but also a lot of reports that the transponder downlink is weak compared to RS-44 or the XW-2 series of satellites. Originally, 
there was speculation that XW3 had a high SWR, which could explain the weak downlink. Doug Pape read the telemetry from the satellite and did the calculation to see that the SWR was 5.6 to 1. Scott Chapman also noticed the high reflected power and wondered if this could be the explanation for the weak downlink signal. Currently, the SATNOGS dashboard for XW3 shows the SWR as being 6 to 1. It should be noted that Alan Kung, BA1DU of CAMSAT, stated something that seemed to imply that this telemetry indicating high reflected power might be incorrect since they use the same software as other satellites but have a different SWR bridge on XW3. It's possible that a 6 to 1 SWR would destroy the power amplifier if operated continuously, so maybe it is just a bad calculation. In fact, that's exactly what this is. In another tweet, Mike Rupert said the value is ridiculous and the antenna was actually tested to have an SWR of about 1.3. In the future, he may update his telemetry decoding software to compensate for this. Eliminating high SWR as an explanation, there are three real differences between XW3 and the XW2 satellites which could explain why XW3 appears weaker. While both satellites are specified to have the same output power of 100 milliwatts, XW2A has a VHF downlink whereas XW3 has a UHF downlink, and there is more signal path loss on UHF than VHF. Additionally, XW3 has a wider transponder than XW2A, 30 kHz versus 20 kHz, so that same amount of power is distributed over a larger passband. Finally, XW3A is in a higher orbit than XW2A, 770 km versus 551 km, so there is also a longer path. Another issue is that the receiver is not as sensitive as would be desired. While it can be worked with 5 watts and an Aero 2 portable antenna, it can be hard. Though Paul Stetzer, NADHM, did it the morning after launch. I was also on that pass and heard Paul weekly make contact with Doug Pape, K8DP. I didn't have luck hearing myself on the transponder though, and I was occasionally using 30 to 40 watts with my Aero 2. I have since successfully made contacts on the satellite. First on a 25 degree max elevation pass over the Atlantic where I used 70 watts, and also on a 75 degree max elevation pass where I was able to use 25 to 50 watts and hear myself on the downlink. In addition to the power and receive sensitivity issues, the downlink passband sometimes has a lot of noise, making it hard to hear signals. That issue has been reported to occur around TCA, or max elevation, and a fluctuating AGC has been implied to be the culprit. Though I don't understand how that could be since in another report the AGC seems to fluctuate in the opposite way. I share all this in the hope that it helps others have success on this new satellite. If you have any information or tips that could help others, please leave a comment. Congratulations to the Chinese Amateur Satellite Group and thanks for all your hard work to launch amateur radio satellites into space.